This episode is filled with so much inspiration for you. They're easy, they're quick, and I know that you can do them. So let's get started. We are definitely all familiar with paint sticks. We use them all the time for stirring paints, of course. But did you know you can use them for other things? And I'm going to show you several ways you can use them. I am going to take several of the smaller paint sticks as well as the larger ones. I'm going to take four of the larger ones and I'm just going to cut off right where that little rounded part starts. Then I'm going to take several of the smaller ones and I don't know exactly how many I cut. Just know that it was quite a bit. <laughs> and I cut off just a little bit of the outside. I would say maybe about two inches. Depending on how thick and how wide you want the shutter to look, it depends on how much you want to cut off of it. If you don't have a miter saw, you can cut it off with your miter box. I'm going to start placing the smaller ones across from two of those larger ones, and they're going to overlap each other. We want to give it that shutter look. And I'm just going to use for now some hot glue and start hot gluing them all the way to the end. Once all the pieces were attached, I'm just going to flip it over and I'm going to secure it in place with some brad nails. I'm not adding one brad nail per stick. I'm just adding them here and there to give it a little bit more security. And these are the half inch brad nails. You can also use staples or you don't have to use any. Just hot glue would be okay if you're not going to be handling the shutter too much. Then I'm going to flip it back over and I'm going to add some hot glue and cover up those edges with one of those longer pieces of paint sticks and one on each side and i'm going to do the same thing secure it with some brad nails for a very secure hold once i had it where i wanted it i'm just going to use some wood filler to fill in the little holes where the brad nails are in just for a smoother finish although you don't have to if you want more of a rustic look once I had them all filled, I'm going to let it dry and I am going to sand them down just so that it is smooth and get it ready for some paint. Speaking of paint, I am going to paint it all back and front using some Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white and I'm going to do a couple of coats. I wanted the shutter to have more of a farmhouse look, so I'm going to take a chippy brush and some gray paint, and I'm just going to dry brush very lightly some just stripes. Just brush it here and there just to give it a little bit more of a distressed farmhouse look, and I did that in the front and the back. And then I wanted to add a wreath. This wreath form came from Target Dollar Spot. I get them all the time for $3 each. I kind of eyed out where I wanted it and I'm just going to start screwing in a little eye hook. That way I can place the wreath form right in front of it and I can also change it season after season. I wanted to add something more wintry for us since it's what the season we're entering in. And I'm just going to add some of these white frosted berries that I got off of a pick from Dollar General. I'm going to cut a couple of them and just hot glue them right there to the top just to add a little bit of character, color, and texture. And then I took some of this Dollar Tree burlap ribbon. I'm going to make a very simple bow. I'm just going to loop it like an awareness loop, scrunch it in the middle, tie it with some jute string, and then just hot glue it to the top of the wreath form. This is just going to finish it off. But I think this one turned out absolutely beautiful. So inexpensive to make and definitely so easy. Anyone can do it. next DIY we are going to start with two of these extra large painter sticks and five of these back scratchers from the Dollar Tree. We are, I'm just marking here where I want to cut off excess parts of this like the ends and that kind of thing and then I'm going to sand down um, the edges to make sure there are no splinters. Now you can make this whatever size you want whatever color you want and the two painter sticks I'm going to paint white and then the back scratchers I am going to paint black using Waverly black paint in the ink and again you can use any colors you want. Once the paint was dry, I am going to distress lightly the edges of the back scratchers. That way, it just you can see all those details 
and I just love these little back scratchers. I'm surprised I haven't seen many DIYs with this online, but I'm glad I got these. So anyways, just sanding them down, and then now it's time to put things together. I'm going to place the two white um, planks, I guess, one on the bottom and one on top, and then I'm going to just stagger the black... Uh, spindles we're going to call them spindles <laughs> and evenly across the middle there until they are kind of even as possible and then we are going to brad nail them in place I am going to fill in the holes that the brad nails left with some wood filler. Then I'm going to scrape the excess wood filler and then sand it down until it's smooth. And then I am going to paint just a little bit to make sure that everything is nicely even and look beautiful. These little flowers are called mimosas, I believe it is, which I thought was kind of clever. Um, I got them at uh, Walmart in, during the summer, and I thought they were really cute. I think it would go for, you know, really everyday decor. And I am going to just place one little branch on each one, and then I'm going to staple them in place. And then I'm going to take some jute rope and just make very simple bows. And I'm just going to hot glue it to the bottom. This is going to add more texture, more decor style, and also cover up the staple. Now remember, this flowers I chose just because I had on hand. And I think the yellow looks great with the white and black. But you can use whatever florals you want. You can even add a wreath to the, to the, to the window. I think it's just gorgeous no matter what you do with it. And just take a look how beautiful it looks. It's one of my favorites from today. Can you believe we use paint sticks and back scratchers to make this? You had me at low. Cause where you go is where for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take this leftover sign from the Christmas season sign and I'm just going to cut it into three separate planks. You can already tell that it had like a planked look. So I'm just going to take those little ridges on the edges, line them up and then use an X-Acto knife to just kind of score it. You've seen me do this before many times. You want to score it a few times. Then you want to snap it until it just snaps off. And I'm going to do that to all three until they're all separated. I'm going to take some wood filler. I'm just going to fill in those little holes so that we have a nice smooth finish. And then once dry, we're just going to sand it down smoothly. I'm going to mark the center of the top and the sides. And then I'm going to angle cut them using the same technique, just scoring and snapping them until I have little arrows. We're going to make a little winter theme arrows to place either on a mantle or on a console table or anywhere you'd like. This is one of the larger paint sticks. I'm just going to stain it using some Rust-Oleum glaze in the brown tone. Then once I, after I applied it, I'm just going to remove the excess with the rag. The arrows I am going to paint, give it a couple of coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white, and I'm going to let those dry. And then I used my Cricut to create three phrases that are perfect for winter. This one says bonfire, and I'm just going to apply it to one of them. The other one says hot cocoa bar and the other one says ski lodge and I'm just going to put them on each plank. And the final step is just to hot glue them in place. Just make sure that each arrow is facing each, you know, a different way. And then hot glue is sufficient. I'm just going to place them right on top of each other. Kind of got a little tilt to them just for a little bit more character. And then I decided to sand down the edges because I just wanted it to look like it's been outdoors and it's weathered. And I think the sign is so stinking cute. I love it. I'm definitely going to use it in my mantle because it is just perfect for winter.
for the next Dollar Tree hack, I am going to take this home sign by from Dollar Tree. And it is beautiful as is, but I have other plans for it. I removed a little galvanized heart from it and I'm going to scuff it up just a little bit using my electric sander. Because when I do this, I feel like paint really sticks to that surface a lot better. I am using Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint in the Linen White. I'm just going to give it a couple of coats. It's a little bit more of a dry brush because I don't want to cover up the plank look. The sign originally had those planks going down and I want to keep those because I feel like it just add a little bit more to the style that I'm looking for. Once I had it completely covered with both coats, I'm going to take this reusable stencil that I got online. I believe it was Amazon and it says together is my favorite place to be. I've used it several times and I'm going to use a um, just a makeup sponge and some Rust-Oleum Chalk Pen in the charcoal tone and I'm just going to stencil it. I did have to move the stencil for the bottom portion of the stencil because it wasn't wide enough. So I had to put them right next to each other instead of on top of each other. And then it's time to add some greenery. Now I want to keep it a little bit more in the winter look because this is the season we're entering. But remember, you can use any florals you want. Now these picks I do get on my Amazon store and I do have it linked down below in the description box if you want to take a look at them. I'm just going to add a couple of them as well as a pine cone just to add more character and texture. I'm going to drill a couple of holes using my drill and a very thick drill bit because I am going to use some, some Dollar Tree nautical rope and it has to be pretty thick. I'm just gonna thread it through one end and knot it in the front. I like that look sometimes instead of knotting it in the back. And I'm just gonna loop it and do that and then we'll be done with this one. I gotta say, this one is on the top there for my favorites. You gotta have to let me know what you think. I think it's so pretty, it's so fresh looking. I love that we use a reusable stencil. So if you don't have a cutting machine, great option for you, I love it. This next DIY is so easy. Now this little house came from Target Dollar Spot and it came in a set of, I believe like three. I'm just gonna stain it using Rust-Oleum Glaze in the gray tone. Once it was dry, I'm gonna use a portion of this huge stencil that has this nice snowflakes. I found one that was big enough to cover a lot of the little house. And I'm gonna use another makeup sponge to just stencil it. Look how pretty it looks. You can even leave it just like this. But I decided to add a graphic to it that says let it snow. I think it just looked real pretty. It customizes it even more. And I think for winter, I think it just looks so cute. So this will be perfect in a small little corner. Maybe even a tear tray, a mantle, wherever you want to place it. Such a great way to add a little bit of a touch of winter decor. And how cute. It was so expensive and so easy to make. For this next DIY, I'm going to take this thrifted wreath form. I got it at the thrift store so long ago. I wanted it to have a very snowy, wintry look. So I'm just going to start applying paint. There's no trick to this, guys. Literally, you just want to start dabbing the paint. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but I just want it to look very frosted. This is Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint in the Linen White. Once I had it covered, I let it fully, fully dry. I made these little trees last year, and I just made it with some foam core from Dollar Tree. I added uh, those uh, mop, those dusting mops, and some wood stems from Dollar Tree. I made a larger one and a smaller one, and I am going to hot glue them right in the center. I'm going to add some greenery, but this greenery has almost like a lamb's ear look where it has that frosted kind of green look. I'm just going to add a few picks right to the bottom of them just to add a little bit more of texture and decor. This buffalo check ribbon just left over from another project. I'm going to make a very simple bow by scrunching it in the middle, tying it, and hot gluing it. Look how easy that was. And it was so inexpensive. Thrifted wreath form. Great for winter. Love the style. 
Now this is a fun DIY. If you have pieces of scrap wood, which is what I use, I cut them into a nice square size and they're all even and I made four of them. If you don't have it, you can use a Dollar Tree sign and just cut them in square or even foam core. It's just so fun. So once I had them sand them down and clean, I'm going to give them uh, two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white. And of course, we're going to let it fully dry. Once it was dry, I am going to distress them. You know, I love a distress look. You don't have to. If it's not your thing, just leave it as is. And you don't even have to paint them white. You can paint whatever color you want. But we're going to make what would look like Scrabble tiles. I'm sure you've seen them. And I use my Cricut. But if you don't have a Cricut, you can use any other method like the carbon paper method, the Mod Pod method, whatever you want. Even a marker, just a permanent marker. I'm going to place the H on this one. And then it's going to spell out the word home. So I am going to place one in each and it's going to have the appropriate number to the letter as the Scrabble game. Once I had them there, I'm going to mark just on each side. I think it was about an inch and a half and I'm just going to drill a screw, but just to make a hole. Once I have the screw in, I'm going to pull it right back out and then I'm going to thread and just screw in one of those eye hooks once again in each hole. Now I want each of them to kind of connect to each other because we're going to hang these tiles vertically. So I want to make sure that the top two are facing one way and that the bottom two are facing the other way. I hope that makes sense. It'll make sense here. See how I was able to connect them together because one are facing sideways and the others are facing front and back, if that makes sense. <laughs> then I'm just going to add a sawtooth hook to the back. And that's it. Look how pretty this looks. Such a fun way to use these tiles, scrap wood, whatever you have at home. I love this one. Great for any season, not just for winter, but I would love to know which one is your favorite. Let me know down in the comments. And as always, I have another video for you to watch. Check it out. I'll see you later and have a blessed day. Bye.